Hi, I'm the Magpie, and I had to go away for a while, but today I am officially back, and I am back with a mega release. So in this video, I am only gonna present all of the gear that I was able to finish while being away. It's a constant workflow of mine where I sort of work on so many things that it all of a sudden just ends up kind of like when finishing an album of sorts. I guess that's an analogy that might work. And then I just want to release everything at once to you. So if you enjoy anything that I present in this video and you want to check it out for yourself and support me, there's a link to magpiepedals.com where already most of what I intend to show you is already available. First batches to be picked up by you. However, I, th there's so much, <laughs> so I simply do not have time to sort of dwell on anything. I'm just gonna go through everything and I'm gonna jump into it right away. But it's worth noting, first of all, that many of these things I'm probably not gonna build many off of. But yeah, to kick things off, let me introduce some updates of older magpie pedals designs. So over here, we finally have a version 2 of Lust. Some of you hopefully remembers version 1 of Lust. Then I have a version 2 of Foam. I have a Bubbles Mega Edition and I have a Bit Pirate version 2 Plus because I already did version 2 of both Bubbles and Bit Pirate. And Bubbles Mega that I call this one, I already hinted at in a previous video and it's simply a 10 step version of Bubbles version 2. So if you go in and you check out the demo video for Bubbles version 2, this one has everything, identical functions. But I really wanted to do like a 10-step version. Um, I might do 10-step versions of all my sequenced pedals. I mean, I have the patterns and I have bonkers as well, which has the same sort of physical format with a five-step sequencer. So it could be fun. Uh, I don't intend to make any more of Bubbles Mega than this one batch. So just... So you know, if you're interested in it, uh, there's there's a limit to how many I intend to make. Bit Pirate version two plus is identical to Bit Pirate version two, except instead of just a uh, on-off indicating LED here, it now has one of these clear pots that also acts as a clean blend. And now I made a batch out of these Bit Pirate version two pluses. So anyone who I mean, enjoys what you can do with the bit part. It's a CMOS technology, monophonic synthesized octaves, um, which now you can also blend in your clean tone, kinda. It's a very primitive and dirty type of effect. So at your leisure, I guess. Anyways, I don't feel like showing that one off either. Too much to show off, simply. However, Foam 2 and Lust 2, I do want to show. So, Foam 2 comes in two different colors, and it's, let's call it an optimization, because originally Foam had two pressure sensors, whereas Foam 2 now only has one pressure sensor, because I 100% focused on pressure sensoring for the time parameter, as I like to call it. So, by pressing here, you are messing with the delay time, which is just a really, really fun effect. And I now made this way bigger in order for it to be a lot more convenient to work with your foot if you have it on a pedal board, but also just more convenient with your hand as well. The controls are really straightforward, you know, classic delay controls, mix feedback time. But the time one sets sort of the spectrum for this one. So you can do all of these weird vibrato things manually, <laughs> you know, which is really, really, really fun and go completely wild and crazy as well. Playing with the feedback and, you know, so it's simply pure Fun. All of these paddles, of course, utilize the triple bypass system that I came up with with my friend Analog Weapon. So Foam 2 now also have a soft switch and you can do momentary on off and you can also do tap tempo bypass. So that's kind of fun. Really strange tremolo. But yeah, that's Foam 2 for you. So quickly gonna move on. 
maybe I build a tower here? Anyways, Lost version 2 is something that I had to spend a lot of time working on because I decided to add a lot of things. So just as Lost version 1, we have two delays here with the same controls as on, on foam, but they can work in either series or parallel. But instead of just a on off LED, now this clear pot is actually a reverb. So we have two delays and a reverb. What I also decided to implement is a second output so that you can do stereo shenanigans. Meaning that you cut this delay off from this delay. So it only works in parallel, I should say. Otherwise it would just echo out. This Kind of a cool effect in itself. But yeah, if you have it in parallel, you can have it set however you want in the stereo spectrum. And introducing the reverb then, it will only be on the brown delay, because we have cut the pink delay out from the signal chain, so to speak, before the reverb. However, just for good measure, I also decided to incorporate an input. So a second input, meaning that the two different delays will be completely separated from each other which sort of makes it so you buy two pedals if you buy this one pedal which is just a really cool uh, I don't know caveat of that uh, situation Sp spooky of course Lust 2 also has the expression jack that is controlling this part so if you go into series Whatever you do with that one will then echo off in the brown one. And that together with the reverb is just glorious. We also have a pressure button for feedbacking. This one. To be able to make those types of sounds. But yeah, instead of having to do it with your hand, but you can of course do it with your hand, you have an expression check. And that's about it. I'm gonna go more in depth with it all uh, in its own video, just as I'm gonna do with everything. Speaking of expression though, I quickly want to show you a small thing that I decided to invent because I don't, I, like I have never seen it on the market. So I decided to create this, which is the Ye expression. So what this is, is simply put an envelope follower kind of but for expression purposes. So you input audio and you get two expression outs from the audio signal that you put in. So when you play, that will be translated into an expression signal. I don't know what that unlocks, but I'm assuming based on like how dynamic it is to play a guitar, it's gonna open for anyone interested in picking one up. It's gonna open a lot of potential creative doors. I would assume. And we have true bypass here on the IO, so you can use whichever you want as an I and whichever you want as an O. This arpeggiator will now be an expression signal. Just doing a filter to get the idea. But it can of course control whatever you want that has an expression input. So it's a fun idea. Uh, and please let me know in the comments if you have seen this before, because I simply have not. So if it already exists and is a very prominent uh, product on the guitar pedal market, then I can just not make more, I guess. But otherwise you can pick them up at magpiepedals.com now already. So far, all of these things are in the web shop, but I'm gonna show a couple of prototypes. First though, I wanna show you a couple of more strange, er, because as many of you know, the last couple of months I was doing a lot of no input and feedback type experiments on this very YouTube channel and I ended up doing it quite a lot and to great effect with talk boxes, which inevitably led me to want to invent my very own talk box type tube feedback instrument. So I did that. The result is this, which is the feedback organ. I can work on a single nine volt battery. And this one is going to be a lot more fun to explore in its very own video, but I might as well give you a quick rundown and show you a couple of sounds. Because what we have here is simply seven holes covering a speaker and seven holes covering each their very individual own microphone here. So microphone holes and speaker holes that you connect with a tube, like so. And then you have a momentary button for each of the mic holes 
as well as a latching switch if you just want the hole activated or the microphone rather than the hole I should say activated at all times and also a volume knob up here we then have additional controls for all kinds of stuff we have a delay here because I felt like implementing that that you can of course also make a feedback going however I do want to cover up some of these speaker holes when I only use one tube for convenience because this one can get pretty loud. Now we're just playing that hole. that I'm not necessarily sure what you can do with the feedback organ. Uh, so I intend to explore it quite a lot more. I have simply come up with this setup of tubifying feedback. <laughs> I'm making a handful of these for the fun of it. And uh, during that process, I will also explore it more, but it would be so fun to hear from you and see if you can come up with ways to sort of develop on this idea. Because at the moment, just based on different tube lengths, you are able to sort of set a, a playable scale of sorts, as I tried to demonstrate here. In any case, I can only show you this briefly, otherwise the video is gonna be super long. So look forward to its own individual video where I will uh, greatly expand on the sounds that you are able to do with it. Even though it's only trying to tame the beast of a feedbacking speaker microphone situation, <laughs> which is just a ridiculous premise for trying to create an instrument to begin with. But it's very, very fun. However, when I was developing this one, I had a brief moment of aha when I figured that the same circuit that I have made for the speaker, I could simply replace the speaker from that and replace that with a spring tank to do a spring reverb. So I designed this, which is wet. And wet, I do not intend to make many of, of at all. But yeah, wet is... Uh, as the name implies, just wet. You just have your input signal and it's simply being pushed into a spring tank very brutally. That also means that the controls are really straightforward. Here we have volume and then we have two separate drivings or distortions or yeah, pushings of the signal. One going into the springs and one on the other side, so out of the springs. And it can just be wild and crazy. Here is a rotary switch where you just switch between different capacitor values where the signal, like at the very, where it gets pushed into the, the springs. So it goes through a cap into the springs and depending on the value of that capacitor, you get a very different effect. There is plexi here for safety reasons, but you can slap this one and together with, I guess, triple bypass shenanigans, either tap tempo or just the fact that only when I hold it in, there's gonna be sounds. You can sort of think of it as a glorious spring acoustic uh, instrument. There's nothing like real springs in a spring reverb. So yeah, wet is a really cool thing, in my opinion. Speaking of like uh, electroacoustic stuff, say I've been doing and uh, I don't know, I wanted to say a microphone. I don't know if you can use that as a microphone, probably if you get rid of the plexi and scream into it. Anyways, you wouldn't have to because over here I have smooch. And smooch is 
Piezo element. Run through a really, 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 really dirty circuit here. So it's the dirtiest microphone ever on more levels than one. Because what I intend for you to do is smooch it. Well, yeah, first you gotta put a battery in it. And when you're in the inside, you can see that the mouth thing actually serves the purpose of holding the piezo in place. So it's just fun and cool. I had a lot of fun coming up with that design. So then you just turn it on and you simply have a one knob for volume. Since it's a contact microphone, you can uh, do whatever you want. Lastly, before I wrap this mega release party video up, I want to show you a couple of prototypes. So these are not finished, but I intend to release them really, really soon. And two of them are very much connected to each other in the same way that you could say the feedback organ and wet is connected to together, one being like a more of a pedal and the other being more of a not a pedal. <laughs> Same here. Uh, this is a very much a continuation beehive, but I tried a thing that I wasn't sure was going to work, but it ended up working. And I actually tried it out for this design originally, but I can show you this one first. So what I did is I take the 4106 Schmidt trigger I see, and in, I replaced the voltage. I replaced it with a sample and hold circuit, meaning that it will simply switch the pitch of all the six oscillators that you can get out of a 4106. So we have these rows of six oscillators each with a volume pod down here. Now we also have a bit of reverb, but that, that's kind of cool. And by pressing this button, you are changing the pitch. Because I'm doing the same type of uh, sample and hold microcontroller setup with clock signals and stuff like that that I do in, for example, my Cozy pedal and also now in this pedal. But uh, yeah, if you hold this one down, you enter a clocked mode where it's just sequencing kind of randomly. And you can set all the different intervals here or like the different pitches. And then you can take this and you can do it five more times if you want to or you can have a couple of them just droning as well. And you can just very easily create complete and utter madness. I also did the individual outs. <laughs> so, so, so something. <laughs> Primitive, because it's such a primitive approach to making a synthesizer. But yeah, if you're into this type of bizarre, nasty type of sounds, <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> you can also clock it externally. I'm gonna do, uh, yeah, we're gonna explore it a lot more in its own video, but it looks really cool, you gotta admit. <laughs> but yeah, why I ended up with that is all because of this, which is what I like to call nasty. And nasty is perhaps the nastiest sounding guitar pedal ever, because it's based on something that is called a crash sync circuit, which I believe is traditionally made with a 555 timer ship, where you take that signal and you simply smash your input signal into the oscillator and the square, you know, the square wave signal and out comes this combination that sounds very broken, overtony, distorted, fuzzy, 
nasty. However, the first pedal that I ever made under the, the name of Magpie Pedals was called Fruits, and Horseman was the genius behind that, and part of that design had what can only be described as sort of a crash sync circuit, but with a 4106 chip instead of a 555 chip. So I wanted to develop upon that, and I tried this sample and hold stuff, and it just worked and then I started tweaking the circuit a bunch and I implemented a whole lot of more functions and out came nasty. Simply put we have that crash sync type circuit going on but with the functions of uh, Cozy. So if we turn it on we have this big knob here that sets the pitch for the oscillator and we have two volume knobs so we, we do have a dry volume but of course can have the sample and hold controlling the pitch. And as you hear, you can get all of these really nasty sounds. <laughs> and this last part here is gonna make the synth start self-oscillating or like turn it more into a synthesizer. That together with the dry mix, however. That's the dry mix. Well, yeah, I'm gonna show it more with guitar and stuff like that. Uh, a synth sound being played with synth output effect is... It's cool, though. It becomes a lot of more, like, overtony and just the destruction. But uh, with a completely different sound input, you get more of that contrast. So look forward to that. I just need to finish it up completely. However, very lastly, I am about to reintroduce at least a small run of the Crazinator. And here I really want to know if anybody knows what the Crazinator is. If you remember it, if you were there five, six, seven years ago now when I first made the Crazinator. So I'm not gonna spoil what it is in this video. I'm just gonna show you how stupid it sounds. It's a pitch shifter, I guess. But in weird intervals. So if we introduce some of the dry. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's a fun little easter egg for those of you who know, the Crazinator is gonna be back in a limited run. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to end on that. And uh, sorry for completely just having to run through all of this without giving anything justice. It's just unbelievably fun for me to be able to do this for a living. So if you click the link magpiepedals.com and you pick anything of this up, uh, you help me continue down that path. And there is so much more coming up that I'm not gonna talk about now at all. But yeah, thank you very, very much. <laughs> uh, yeah, I truly, like, the, I won't be able to do any of what I love doing if you don't support my work in that process. But I'm back, I'm gonna continue making more videos, I have a lot of videos lined up as well. I just wanted to focus 110 billion percent on finishing everything that I had in the pipeline so that I could get it out there. So, even though this was a shitty way to demonstrate stuff, Hopefully uh, you enjoy me trying to convey how fun it is to come up with all of this idea and just shove it down the internet throat. So thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.